Hi, everybody, and welcome to Exploring the Possibilities of Mobile Giving. On today, January 17, 2013, I hope you all are having a lovely day. Just a little bit about ReadyTalk, which is the system that we are using. You can go ahead and ask questions via the chat pane. I will be connecting those questions audibly to our speakers at chat breaks. But whenever you have a question pop in your mind, go ahead and put those into, your, into the chat pane for us. If you do lose your Internet connection at any time, you can still reconnect to the webinar using that same link. And remember that we are recording today's session, and we are going to be putting um, all of the all of the all of the session, all of the session um, materials, both online, and we're going to be emailing it out to all the registrants. And so you will be able to access the information afterwards for review. Or if you, for some reason you have to leave early, you will still be able to watch this session. So again, today we're going to be exploring the possibilities of mobile giving with our three wonderful presenters today. And just a little bit about everybody who is going to be speaking. My name is Kyla Hunt. I am the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup Global. And then today with us is going to be Jim Manis. Jim is, um, founded the Mobile Giving Foundation in 2007 with the support of other leaders from the wireless and nonprofit communities to pioneer the use of mobile channels for charitable giving. We are also going to be hearing from Lars Jornis. Lars is the founder and president of connect to give who is a true expert in mobile payment and mobile value-added services. He is one of a few with in-depth experience in the mobile industry going back to the launch of mobile billing and value-added mobile services in Scandinavia in 2000. And then also from connect to give we are going to be hearing from Scott Height, who has spent over 20 years providing technology services to Fortune 500 companies and nonprofits. So I'm really, really excited to hear what Scott, Jim, and Lars all have to say today. Also assisting us with chat is going to be Shab Sigmund. And we're also going to be um, assisted by Jamila Robinson. So you might hear you might see both of those names kind of pop up in chat if you're having any problems with tech uh, with uh, Ready Talk, if you're having any problems um, finding information about the organization, or if you just want to hear ask questions, go ahead and Type those questions in the chat pane. So, a little bit about what we're going to be covering today. First up, we're going to be hearing from Jim from the Mobile Giving Foundation, who's going to be talking about the state of mobile giving. And then, after we speak with Jim, we're going to um, have a couple of questions read to him so we can kind of see what you all are thinking or want to know. And then, we're going to take it over to Connect to Give, who is going to be talking about a year in the life of mobile fundraising. And we are going to be finishing up with the remainder of the Q&A. So with that, Jim, why don't you go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Kyle. Hey, I'm delighted to be here today, and I'm delighted to have a chance to, to chat with, uh, with all of you. Of course, the Mobile Giving Foundation was in a position to pioneer uh, direct uh, text to, to give solutions back uh, beginning in 2007, rolled out in 2008, and had everything set up in time to um, respond to the Haiti earthquake uh, beginning in uh, January of 2010. It's been, a, uh, it's been an interesting uh, few years, early stage development. Our mission as we have developed this channel uh, in association with the wireless operators both across the United States and across Canada, has really been to enable the power and the reach of mobile technology and apply that um, technology to qualified nonprofits as they fundraise and as they engage and acquire new donors. And that mission is set in the context of very specific principles on our side of trust and security. So we believe that values related to trust, security, transparency, accountability are important in terms of long-term sustainability. So think of us as, um, as a neutral entity. We are a 501c3 uh, as well. We enable charities to, uh, to do those three primary uh, things, acquire new donors, raise new incremental funds, and engage donors on an ongoing basis. Um, this is a technology that really presents um, a capability to make an impulse gift 
uh, it's you, you can see that thought uh, tied back to price points of uh, that tend to be smaller in range, five and ten dollars, making it easier for new donors to step in to support a charity. And of course, part of our mission is to really reflect uh, the goodwill back to uh, the mobile industry and our brand sponsors, uh, because. Each of those wireless operators participate and allow us to do this at no cost. 100% of the gift is that uh, a donor is made and the, a carrier processes, uh, works itself through the system without the wireless operator taking uh, anything or any part of that transaction. So it truly is a, um, a, a give back, if you will, from the wireless industry across the community. Our program services as a 501c3 really um, provide the uh, range of services and enabling services beginning with accrediting charities. Standards are important to this business and providing access to charities that are qualified against um, charity standards is uh, a, a specific mission of ours to reinforce those principles of transparency and accountability and to really uh, make sure that as donors and as the wireless industry, we are looking at what impact charities have on their mission. Uh, we, uh, so that's an important part of the process that results in a charity having a contract with the Mobile Giving Foundation, which then allows us to be able to certify to the wireless operators that, um, that a charity is qualified and that a campaign is operational under the under the uh, terms and conditions that we have that we have set. That allows us to mitigate against the risk, which can then gives us the ability to operate uh, not only across wireless operators, but also under the purview of federal and state uh, regulators. Our platform is a billing platform, so essentially we provide a billing service using the text. Um, as not just a communication device, but also as a billing device. When a donor replies um, affirmatively and then confirms uh, a yes to their willingness to make a donation, that donation appears on a, uh, on a carrier bill. The carrier collects that donation, remits to us, and then we remit back out to the beneficiary or charity. Those two functions are really about the billing platform is when a donor responds to the call to action, that initial response, text a keyword to a short code to make a $10 gift, it's our platform. We send a response back to that donor asking for confirming yes. When they confirm yes, that comes back to our platform. And then we send a uh, thank you message back to the donor as well as a billing message back to the wireless operator. That's a closed system that really provides and maximizes uh, value for uh, the consumer response. Reconciliation and remittance is key for charities. And as is a 360-degree view of that transaction, this really increases and maximizes trust to the greatest degree and allows us to track every pledge made, every um, pledge resolved, in a payment of their bill to the wireless operator, every remittance from that wireless operator to us, and a reconciliation of the whole system on behalf of an individual beneficiary charity tied to a unique keyword. So at the end of the day, the Mobile Giving Foundation is the party that remits the donation made through this process uh, to the charity, along with a remittance report with a copy back to your ASP. So these enabling services are really that core portion that provides for um, a trusted transaction. And it's a neutral platform built to uh, support ASPs, of which, of course, Connect to Give is a very prime example, whose job it is to work with you in executing and developing a strategy. Uh, man managing and integrating databases, and optimizing your mobile giving campaign. So in our view, 
and we've been in, we're really kind of wireless uh, wireless folks, if you will. We've been involved in the mobile industry for quite some time. In our view, we really live today in the age of mobile. When we look at charities as organizations, we see that they have been essentially slow to adapt to the fact that we do live in that age. And I think that we, as all parties, really have an, an obligation to work towards closing that gap. I think the wireless community has an obligation to continue to evolve faster networks and smarter devices, which, of course, you see takes place um, every day. It's a very, very competitive industry. And specifically for wireless, for charities, we have an obligation to improve uh, return on your investment as you uh, invest and promote um, within and across the, the mobile channel. I think you guys have an obligation to, to maintain relevance and leadership. And there's some specific things that you can do in terms of uh, expanding to the, mobile, to the mobile channel from online and, and uh, direct mail uh, to ensure efficient database integration making resource commitments internally to accomplish that and others. Mobile technology is a technology that by definition, by virtue of it being personal, and by uh, regulatory uh, purview, requires a focus on the consumer or the donor first. It's not online. It is mobile. And, techno and the technology and the regulations the best and the best practices uh, really require you to focus on what's best for your donor or, be or best for your supporter. So oftentimes in the mobile industry, as you're devising marketing campaigns, there will be um, different rules and regulations that you'll see. And those rules and regulations are really designed to think of what's best for the consumer with respect to calling out um, and providing them transparency on what they're doing, what they've done, where their money is going, and how it's being used. So the challenge there is for everybody to think of mobile as a channel and not as a strategy. I think so happen what happens so often is, is that um, you know, we tend to get lost in the, in the details of implementation, which really kind of keeps us locked into a strategy mode when in fact mobile is a channel that sits side by side with television and radio and online and print. Um, and we really need to think about how we can best integrate mobile across channels and really leverage that uh, on behalf of uh, your own specific objectives. And I think that if you've tracked mobile over the past few years uh, between TV and online and uh, and specifically mobile as a channel. You, you know, follow the, perhaps the debate where mobile was, was the third screen. And I think today, with respect to the growth of the mobile web, I think you're really the challenge to think of mobile as the first screen. And that does have strategic implications, but more than anything, it, has, um, uh, it, it reinforces the fact that it is a, uh, a, a channel that provides a communication means and a means for engagement with, with your donors. So part of what I can do to help underscore that is just simply to define what the addressable audience looks like when you look at the wireless industry. Wireless subscribers in the United States continue to grow at a significant rate, even though we are above 100% penetration. So today you're looking at over 330 million handsets in the market, in the U.S. market. You're looking at active smartphones and, uh, and uh, tablets that now exceed 50% of the, of the subscriber base. And from a utilization standpoint, you see data traffic up significantly, and you see text messages continue to grow at a phenomenal rate, over 2.3 trillion text messages annually. Text is beginning to level off. But the point there is that more people send text messages than they spend um, with on minutes of use talking on their phone. So if you take a look at that part of it and the demographics that support wireless, you really have to uh, come away knowing that the addressable audience for mobile is huge. And the 
characteristics of mobile really make it a very uniquely effective engagement tool. It's more convenient. Nearly 91% of Americans have their cell phones within arm's reach 24 hours a day. It's more effective. You know, texting is pervasive. It generates response rates uh, to 10 times higher than Internet display ads. And it's more efficient. Text messages are open and read within five minutes and responded to within 15 minutes. So that really has laid a, the groundwork, not just as an addressable audience, but in terms of the characteristics of the of the of the of the technology itself for charities to adopt mobile and build on mobile as a base. I think we're early stage. The numbers look promising. Over 20% of charities now use text uh, for fundraising. 67% of organizations see integration of mobile with social media as a key value. And we see that as a, uh, as a particularly strong area of growth over the next two years, including things like integrating mobile giving in a social gaming environment and other ways where both acquisition and engagement can be the, 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 fo the focus. And 34% of charities have an active mobile program. Now, I, I think those numbers should grow significantly. And I think that's probably what we're seeing in the marketplace today. I do think that there are a number of charities uh, among you where uh, the adoption of mobile first comes in the form of advocacy and other non-fundraising fund raising related activities. But I think that's uh, great. And I think it offers a basis of extension uh, from other non-fundraising activities into fundraising. That's about marketing strategy, it's about engagement strategy, it's about fundraising strategy. So if you take a look at how donors think of mobile and mobile giving, let me just kind of go through a couple of quick stats for that because it reflects um, the, the perception of that huge addressable audience using that uniquely personal device. From an awareness standpoint, and the, these statistics come from a survey that the Mobile Giving Foundation does in concert with the Mobile Giving Foundation of Canada uh, and uh, sponsored by the Canadian Wireless Telecommunications Association. But it's uh, clear that there is a growing awareness of, uh, of text to donate. So among that large addressable audience today, we see 56% of 18 and 34-year-olds that are either aware of or and have texted or aware of and have not texted. And we think that is a, um, a, a healthy number and creates an opportunity uh, for expansion uh, uh, using a text to give solution. Uh, it's clear that the most successful campaigns are those campaigns that view mobile as a channel and integrate the call to actions across, uh, across channels and not try to rely exclusively on the mobile channel for uh, awareness and engagement. Clearly, an appeal for TV has the highest rate of response. But if you take a look at this uh, slide, you'll also see that the second highest category, of course, is social media engagement. So there's a range of, uh, of strategies that can be best deployed to help integrate mobile across these channels to reach uh, your fundraising and acquisition goals. And donors expect that. And at the end of the day, when you've provided them that opportunity to engage and to donate, there's a huge satisfaction rate among donors for using this mechanism. 90% would donate again. 83% are in a position of referring uh, that experience onto a friend. Uh, we think that's a, a strong, uh, reflects a, a strong um, uh, degree of engagement with mobile and, of course, um, sets up an opportunity for you to engage them outside of fundraising for continued loyalty and, um, and, and support.
part of that support is the willingness and the interest of those who've donated via text to continue to engage via text in other mobile channels. The donor interest in follow-up is significant. 58% is high. And if I uh, burrow in on those that are interested in receiving a, uh, or participating in a monthly reoccurring event, you're looking at 16% of 18 to 34 year olds. So that follow-up engagement, whether it's based on advocacy, whether it's based on other forms of engagement, or whether it's based on additional fundraising, uh, we think offers a very effective uh, mobile offers a very effective uh, engagement uh, tool. Let me just uh, comment uh, a little that the Mobile Giving Foundation, when we began in 2007, of course, as a 501c3, uh, has always been interested in, in seeing how we can advance uh, charity standards. And this past year, in, two, in 2012, um, took uh, actions that entered, uh, that entered into a joint venture between the Mobile Giving Foundation, the Council of Better Business Bureaus, and the BBYS Giving Alliance. The purpose of this joint venture is to reinforce standards, but the purpose of this joint venture also goes to bringing uh, well-respected brands on consumer trust to helping grow the mobile giving channel, improving charity ROI, and ensuring that charity leadership, as opposed to the wireless operators, are the ones in the position to define uh, where mobile goes and how it goes in support of charitable activities. So with that, uh, Kyla, let me stop, and I'm happy to take any questions that uh, you want to address at, at this point. Sure. So we've had a few questions come in. Um, the first one was from Abby. She was wondering, um, she said her CFO would like more information about um, the $350 Mobile Giving Foundation application fee. She was wondering how that fee was used, if the application was rejected, if the money was returned, and just to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so we publish the standards in advance, so charities can do kind of a pre-selection on that. The $350 uh, application fee is a one-time application fee uh, that supports a 12-month uh, agreement with, uh, with the MGF. There is a $100 renewal that will kick in on year, on year two. Um, you know, we, uh, there's, uh, there's certainly, uh, you know, the intent is not to refund in the event that a charity is denied. Uh, the intent is to help the charity uh, make an, a self-assessment or work with your ASP like Connect to Give in advance of submitting that application uh, so that you can have a you know, high probability of, of, uh, of acceptance. Uh, you know, while we have denied some, uh, our denial rate is a little bit below, actually it's about 13%. Um, but the information is presented in advance and if your CFO has any particular, you know, questions about that, I'm happy to uh, to reply offline, but uh, the intent is not to penalize. The intent of the 350 application fee is simply to cover our costs of processing uh, contract of, of, and of handling the initial uh, uh, clearance communications with the wireless operators. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we also have a question from Olga who is wondering how a church would use mobile giving. Well, it depends upon the church. But we do see large uh, faith-based organizations, uh, churches with uh, significant congregations that use mobile giving in a range of factors, uh, even from uh, uh, Sunday collections. Uh, typically, uh, those collections are for a specific, uh, uh, are dedicated to a specific mission. Um, and we see that when uh, a call to action is made from the pulpit, you know, typically, you know, you're looking at a 68% response rate um, in, in, in terms of um, those who are donating uh, to a call to action from the pulpit. Um, you know, churches, uh, you know, we ask churches and faith-based organizations to still follow the parameters and standards that we've set. 
and we also recognize the IRS uh, rulings on uh, church of the, the 501 Okay, thank you. Um, we also had a question from Julie. I'm just going to take a couple of more questions, and I do want to make sure that um, Connect to Give has um, enough time for their section. Um, but Julie was wondering what the sample size for the percentages um, from your charts would have been. You know, I don't have the top of my head, but I'm happy to give you the full study. And if you go to in, on the full study, uh, the methodology of the study itself, including the sample size, were, were, uh, are defined. It's, it's a significant sample. Um, I'm going to say something a little bit less than 1,000. But if you go to uh, mobilegiving.org, uh, I'm sorry, mobilegiving.ca uh, for Canada, CA, you will find the, um, uh, uh, st the study that you can download for both 2011 and 2012. Okay, great. Thank you. And we also had two questions that are, are somewhat related, and this will be the last question before the next section. Um, but Anne was wondering if you would elaborate on what qualified meant. Um, they were, I guess, their organization is only a year old, and she was wondering how they would be vetted. And then Katie was wondering what the average length of time it takes for an organization to become accredited with mobile giving. So let me uh, talk uh, two things. Our, uh, the MGF standards have been in place since 2008. We have uh, adopted the, the Wise Giving Alliance standards as a full-fledged set of standards. We approve to ours, the MGF, which is a set of uh, 10 questions that's part of the application package that you receive, and it focuses on a range of things like um, uh, governance, um, finance, uh, essentially a melding, if you will, of the primary standards across uh, Charity Navigator and BBB into a mobile format. Uh, they're fairly brief, but we do collect data to support that, and that data collection process is defined within, within the application. I, I think it's, it's, fairly, um, it's fairly easy. The type of data that we ask for is typical data that charities have immediately. Once we receive your initial application, uh, we process that application within a very short time frame. Um, and, you know, I think we commit to a week turnaround. Uh, we, if, if need be, we can process that application in a 48-hour period. Um, and we do ask that if you are not B2B accredited, that you commit to looking at those B2B Wise Giving Alliance standards over the next 12 months um, and in the beginning that process of accreditation. Again, that's our commitment to a broader set of standards those standards aren't uh, used to uh, process the initial application, but it's our expectation that the charities will uh, will accept and go down that, that that path. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, with that, I think we should go ahead and get going with um, the Connect the Gifts section. I do want to let everybody know that if we didn't get to your question at this point, um, we will take a look at the questions at the, end of this, uh, at the end of the session. And if for some reason we just don't get to your question at all during today's session, I will be making sure that the presenters are aware of those questions, and we will get back to you as we are able. But Jim, I really wanted to thank you for a great presentation and for being willing to collaborate today. Um, sure, Kyle. Just one, one final comment, if you don't mind. I, I see there's been – I probably missed one element on your last question. Those things that talk about a year in place and a $300,000 uh, low level uh, disappear if the charity has become BBB accredited. If you've become BBB accredited, we eliminate those measures and stay focused only on the governance and the transparency of issues. So that said, thank you, Kyla, for, your, for the opportunity to chat today, and I look forward to any follow-up. All right. Thank you, Jim. I really appreciate it. And with that, I want to go ahead and give the floor to Scott and Lars. Um, I believe Lars is going to be speaking first, so take it away. Okay. Thank you so much, Kyla, and thank you so much, Jim, for the nice introduction here with the mobile giving. My name is Lars Jörn, and I'm the founder and president of connect to give I have worked with mobile fundraising for more than 12 years now, and was lucky to be involved in the introduction of mobile fundraising here in U.S. back in 2008 with Mobile Giving Foundation and Jim. 
it has been a wonderful experience for me to learn and to see how Americans actually love to give and to help. I come from Denmark. Maybe you can hear it on my accent. Um, it was also a, a privilege for me to discover how easy it actually is to bring and to implement good ideas and new technology here in U.S. So based on mine, and uh, not only mine, but all experiences we now have in connect to give we have found the way to be successful with mobile fundraising. And we want to share this knowledge with you and your organization here today, and also in the future, of course. So especially three things are important to pay attention to if you want to succeed with the mobile fundraising. And first, please do not see mobile fundraising as a single isolated event or payment method. Implement it and promote it with every marketing and promotion activity you have in your organization. Secondly, do not forget your donor after receiving your pledge or donation. We see that it's a great adventure to actually keep cultivating your donors over time, and they will be loyal and donate to you again and again. And most important, they will spread the word about your organization, your course, and they will tell friends, they will tell their colleagues, and they will tell family to support your organization as well. So with these words, I will give the word to my colleague Scott, who will show you more in detail and some, show you some best practices and share with you how to be successful with mobile fundraising. So Scott, it's yours. You got it. Thank you, Lars. Okay, so where are we so far? Uh, let's take a step back for a quick second and just sort of frame a little bit the Mobile Giving Foundation compared to Connect to Give. Um, to put the Mobile Giving Foundation in a two or three sentence sort of perspective, as far as the nonprofit is mainly concerned, they have two purposes. Number one, is to vet you to ensure that you meet the standards that they and the cell phone industry have set. Um, and then number two, they become the clearinghouse for the funds. Um, hopefully that clears up a couple of, of questions as far as, as their role. Then connect to give as the service provider is providing you with the software tools in order to do the mobile fundraising. Uh, with that in mind, Mobile fundraising is more than just the 5 or $10 that's billed to a cell phone bill. Uh, it's a whole host of tools to be implemented year-round. Uh, Lars already made mention of this. Um, you know, quite often, especially after you know, Haiti took place and Red Cross raised the, the $40 million, uh, every nonprofit under the sun ran for mobile fundraising thinking they would turn it on and it would rain money on them. And they quickly learned that that's not really the case. The ones who are still here, the ones who are still doing it and still growing, realize that it's something that they add to the mix of things that they do, uh, and also extracting other aspects of using mobile uh, in order to make it a full platform. And those tools include to give, which are the five and ten dollars billed to the cell phone bill. That's the part that goes through the Mobile Giving Foundation. To pledge which is mobile pledging, um, similar to traditional pledging where people will make a pledge and you call them back to collect the donation. With mobile pledging, they can fulfill by credit card either through a mobile payment page, um, through swiping a credit card, uh, even if they are giving you, you know, a check or you're calling them back. But it's handled through the cell phone. Alert messaging, gathering everybody's cell phone numbers and being able to do text message blasts similar to the way you do email blasts. And let's talk about that for a quick moment because that's a, a huge focus that people need to pay more attention to. Your database is aging. I don't care how new you are or how old your organization is, your database of, cell, of phone numbers is out of date. 
the number of landlines in this country is decreasing exponentially. And I promise you, the first thing your follower does when they get rid of their landline is not say, I got to call that nonprofit and give them my cell phone number so they can still contact me. So it's very important for you to start figuring out ways to get everybody's cell phone numbers. Because not only do you want to use this to get these 20 and 30 somethings so you can start cultivating them, but you also want to maintain your existing database. So that's huge. And alert messaging helps you to do that. Um, then the fourth piece being a mobile website. And the difference between a mobile website and a cell phone app, because I get asked this all the time. So we'll go through that a little bit. A cell phone app is actual software that's been developed and installed onto a cell phone. You need separate apps for Apple, Android, BlackBerry. You're hiring a programmer, whether full-time for your org or an outside org. Every time you need to make an update, you need to go back to that programmer and update the cell phone app. A mobile website is a website that's been formulated to look properly on a cell phone screen. If you go to, say, Yahoo or CNN on your cell phone, you're actually seeing m.yahoo or m.cnn. That stands for mobile. Um, you can still click a button to see a, a full website, but what you're looking at is a website that's concise, smaller, streamlined to look right and work properly on a smaller screen. Um, all of these together help you create a good mobile strategy over the course of a year. So you decide to sign up for mobile. Um, what are the steps in order to be successful? Well, first things first, you're going to be applying to the Mobile Giving Foundation. Um, that is, if you meet their criteria. And, and again, they have a checklist that you can go through. Um, for the various requirements, the main thing is you're a 501c3, larger than half a million dollars a year in revenue. Um, the rest of the things are, are mostly things that you can address, like compliance language and so forth. And as Jim mentioned, if you are a BBB accredited seal holder, then that $500,000 requirement, um, you know, that can go out the window. Um, but go into that further, take a peek at the uh, checklist, and make sure before you do the application, because as he said, they won't refund that $350. Um, so you need to create your keywords. And you're going to pick words based more on the name of your organization or your mascot or something that you can use year-round. You want to brand yourself with these keywords. Um, I've always had people who want to change the word for every different event that they have. And the problem there is you have to constantly teach people over and over again what the new word is and, and give them instructions. By using a branded keyword, it almost becomes your mobile logo. After a certain number of events, after seeing it a cer certain number of times, it becomes second nature. You know, the example on the screen, Little Kids Rock, uh, with the keyword rock, it matches their name. It makes sense. It's part of what they do. And after two or three events, same people are coming to the events. They just know, pull out your phone, text rock to 52,000 to donate $10. Now, the concept of mobile logo, you want to plaster this everywhere. If you really consider it your mobile logo, anywhere your name and your logo is, this should be applied. Your email signatures, your social media pages, your websites, anything and everything with your name on it. Now that's all passive branding. Uh, I firmly believe you will at least reach your return on investment just from doing that. But as we already stated earlier, it's not going to rain money on you for doing this. You're going to be branding yourself. Money will trickle in. It will help pay for the system. But it's all about getting it out there. So how do you actually make this work for you? Well, making it work for you is going to be what I'll call a stop traffic moment at an event. And that's where you have everyone focused on you, and you're asking them, take out your phone. This is what we're doing right now and why we're doing it. So for argument's sake, a baseball team is going to give you a banner at the back of the stadium. And you think everybody and 50,000 people in the stadium are going to donate 10 bucks because they saw it on a banner. Well, 
I doubt you'll even get the money back for the banner. People are there to be happy, have fun, have a good time. So how would you make that work? Well, you'll make that work by having that stop traffic moment. You're on the Jumbotron showing a tug at your heartstring video. You're standing at the pitcher's mound with some of the players, and you're waving your phones around and saying, this is what we're doing right now. Take out your phone. So sort of two-pronged approach. Branding, where you plaster it everywhere, and the stop traffic, listen up, this is what we're doing at an event. And we'll get into some examples in a couple of minutes. Now the second thing for getting started has to do with the data collection. We talked about the cell phones and the fact that your database is aging. So all, lo all roads lead to the alert list, the ability to do the text message blasting. Anyone who donates, you want to get them an invitation to the alert list. Anywhere where you collect name, address, phone number, and email, you want to get them into the alert list. Just like 10 years ago, we all started adding that line about emails to collect everybody's email. Now you want to add cell, um, cell phone number and a little checkbox. By checking this box, you allow us to send one to two alerts a month. There's widgets for your website. People can enter their cell phone number and opt in and opt out. Um, you're going to want to send out an email blast. You're going to want in every way, shape, and form, just like you did with 2Give, start pushing people to get onto the alerts list so you can gather those cell phone numbers. Now the third piece of the, uh, the puzzle is the mobile website. Now with the mobile website, uh, we already discussed apps versus mobile websites. And this will be designed and tailored to match your existing theme. You'll get your logos. You'll get your colors and so forth. You make a nice, concise little website with the very important things that people want to see and want to use on a quick basis. And of course, they can still go to your full website. But you're just making it easier for them to do what they need to do and interact with you from their mobile devices and tablets. All right, so you've done some branding. You've started building your list, your mobile website. And uh, you're all planned out, and you're ready to go. Let's take a look at some events and how you're going to be promoting this throughout the year. First example, uh, we'll say Valentine's Day. And you have a Valentine di Valentine's Day dance-off. So what do we need to do here in advance? Well, we want to drive people to the event. We're going to post it on our social media pages. It will be in our newsletter. We will send a text message to our groups of subscribers on our alert messaging. And well, how about some promotions? So tickets are $20 at the door, but you can text a donation of $10 in advance for your ticket. Now being Valentine's Day, maybe we also want to do some screencasting. So besides texting the keyword, somebody can also include a dedication. So in the example here, the Valentine to 52,000, I can do Valentine space Hi Mom, or as you see on the screen, Joe to Mary, I love you. And that's popping up on the screen next to a nice live thermometer. And the thermometer is helping guide the audience into donating more. It's exciting to see, and it gets them to donate multiple times. Even though it's only 5 or $10 donations to the cell phone bill, each carrier will let you donate anywhere between 3 to 5 times a month. And uh, Verizon is 5 times a month. So you could technically donate $50 a month through Verizon. So we've had our nice Valentine's Day dance. Where do we go from there? How about we're in May and we're into our golf outing? Now we're talking a little bit more established donors, donors a little bit older, a little bit more money in their pockets, ones with credit cards. In this case, we'll again have an alerts list. Maybe I'm going to participate in the golf outing and, you know, hey, I'd like to know if it's going to rain and you're going to switch it to another day, uh, venue changes, date changes, and so forth. Um, so you have an alert list specifically for attendees to the event. Now I'm at the event, and you're going to want to do the same kind of stop traffic moment we referenced earlier. Um, everybody's at the lunch in the middle of the day. And uh, they've had their food. They had some drinks. You're about to bring out dessert, and you're making a little speech, maybe a, a, a display on a screen. And here it's everybody take out your cell phone and donate at least $200, and we'll put your name in a hat to win a set of golf clubs. 
or whoever donates the most will get to have dessert at the table with our speaker. Everybody's fighting to be the big donor, or everybody's at least putting in um, the $200 or whatever amount that you've set. Now collecting the credit cards, you can have swipes that plug into your cell phone like a cube or a square, and, uh, and, and we and the other providers can have that as well. Um, people can click on a link and go to a mobile payment page, back to the mobile web. Uh, you can visit the different tables or have a specific location set up at the venue where people can come and process their credit cards. And then of course all of this up on the screen again with live thermometers and so forth. Now the idea being that not every tool is for every event and you don't use the same thing over and over and over again because it gets stale and that's how you live your lives now just with a different set of tools, all things that you add into the mix. So from May's golf outing, let's head on to July's 5K run. Now here at the 5K run, we're dealing with a lot of people, and it's the general public again. Uh, whenever you have a race, typically you have people sponsoring you. So in this example with the keyword run, everybody sponsoring Jane Smith is going to type run Jane Smith. And everyone sponsoring me would be run Scott Height. And well, guess what? We're going to give a prize to whoever raised the most money. And Jane Smith raised more money than I did right up on the screen, a nice big congratulations. Jane wins an iPad for raising whatever amount of money. Now all of these things that we've gone through so far also have social media tie-ins. So anytime someone donates, they can click a button and make a post to Facebook and Twitter and so forth. That's a great way to pull additional people into an event. And our next example, in September where we have a radiothon uh, is really a prime viral and peer-to-peer -peer example. Uh, in this case, we had Troy Pomalalu of the Steelers um, raising money for Focus North America, a religious organization he's a part of. And he was on Twitter and Facebook and on the radio all live and in real time answering questions and, and so forth, and advised people to take out their phones, make the $10 donation, and then asked them to make sure that they went on email, Facebook, and Twitter and got others to donate. And it you know, went pretty viral and peer-to-peer -peer from there. And the, I, I don't have the exact statistic on the number of the retweets and, and reposts, but if you can imagine every one person, and particularly on Facebook, who reposts for you has an average of 300 friends. You don't need to have an immense following on your social pages in order to turn this into a big thing. You know, if you have 500 people and you get 30 of them to, you know, to repost, you know, that's, that's 3,000 people right there. If I'm doing my math right as I'm talking fast. It's fun not being able to hear everybody uh, interacting back in a webinar, isn't it? All right. I laughed at that. <laughs> oh, good. From September, let's move on to November. And here now we're into Thanksgiving. And in Thanksgiving, this is perfect for uh, food banks and food drives. Um, food banks particularly have a really great way of turning a donation into a transaction, giving you something to very specifically focus on. I can just vaporize $10 by giving you $10. My $10 is 20 meals. I can picture that food. And that's good advice no matter what kind of fundraising that you're doing, is always try and give people something to picture that they're almost purchasing with it. You know, your $10 is five vaccines or I would say an hour of speech therapy, but anybody on here with, you know, kids that speech therapy know that's no way 10 bucks. Um, in this particular case, they are text blasting their followers, hey, bring cans down to the food drive on Sunday. And from there, hey, you can't make it, you can still help donate $10. They're also doing a media blitz. They have special interest on the local news. They have a television commercial. They're on their social pages. And again, asking people to spread out further from there. Um, our final example on a slide would be a gala fundraiser in December. Um, typical time, everybody has their year-end gala fundraiser, your big ticket donors. Very similar to the earlier example of the golf outing where we're alerting people to upcoming 
the gala fundraiser, purchasing the tickets, or do they want to sponsor it? Um, and then at the actual event, asking them to donate, and, and additional messaging that can go up on the screencasting. So our examples here, let's build our city together, Michael Type, or Smith Corporation, and so forth. Um, now, being credit card donations and being unlimited amounts other than what the limit is on their credit card, I'll tell you, over the past six months, the amounts have jumped up tremendously. Uh, typically, we would seen 25 to $500 donations. And about six months ago, 1,000 and 5,000 became pretty standard. And as of November, December, we've started to see a lot more $10,000 donations. And this particular event, uh, Enterprise Community in, uh, in Manhattan, uh, became Sandy. And there were uh, several donations done on there. And also, again, with credit card, as opposed to the, the cell phone bill donations, you have to follow local rules and raf raffle regulations, um, but you can still do a giveaway. Uh, with the donations to the cell phone bill, it's okay if you give something to everyone, like everyone at the baseball game show this text message for a 10% um, off of the team store or a free hot dog, but they don't really want it to be a contest. With the credit card, you can do contests based on your local raffle rules. So here it's whoever donated the most one dessert at the guest speaker's table was Edward Norton. Um, now, without a slide, I'll just talk about uh, one or two other examples on some of the questions earlier. I think it was Olga that mentioned about a church. And in a church scenario, absolutely, you can do um, the virtual collection plate and um, recurring donations. People can, you know, from credit card decide, I'm going to give X amount of money every single month, and you don't have to keep hitting them up. Then, of course, there's the alert messaging. So it's this Saturday, it's our bake sale. Make sure you come on down and, and bring your pies or bring your appetite in your wallet. Um, what about phone trees? One great thing about the alert messaging is the ability to remove uh, a phone tree. Those auto-dialing phone trees take forever. They cost you probably more money than an entire mobile platform. And yet it's instantaneous because everyone gets the message at one time. And being a text message, you know they're going to get it and they're going to read it. Because I know everybody listening right now, right if now. I texted you at the morning, you're going to get the phone. You're going to update me on time? Are we in Some Someone said something. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, it, it, so, yeah, I don't think anybody said anything. It sounded like that you were um, uh, breaking up a little bit, but maybe that was just because you were pausing. Okay. Nope. Um, I, yeah, all right, never mind. So let's conclude. Um, with mobile fundraising, your return on investment is going to be reached many different ways. There's a lot of different ways to measure it. Uh, it's really easy to be successful with mobile fundraising, but you have to use it. You have to add it to the mix of what you do. If you sign up for it and you leave it and you let it sit there, it's not going to work, plain and simple. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be taxing on your resources. If you spend more than 20 minutes a month dealing with mobile fundraising, you're doing something wrong. The majority of the tools built in the beginning and are there for you to use and add to your mix. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that particularly requires maintenance is the alert messaging. And you know what events and things you have going on well in advance. So once a month, you'll hop onto a web portal, you'll schedule some messages, you'll get back out. Unless there's an emergency or something you need to change, you don't have to be in there all the time. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Don't be afraid of this taxing your resources. Clearly. This is the right smartphones. Uh, if it hasn't already happened, it's within the next month or two that it's going to overtake desktops. Um, the time to get in on you know, attacking this is now uh, while it's still you know, early, but you an early adopter. This is the big wave that's starting now. Um, and you know, as far as Give and Mobile Giving Foundation is concerned, it's really never been easier to go mobile. Um, and TechSoup did a pretty thorough vetting uh, uh, of us, and you know, we are here for you and happy to answer any questions and help you any way we can. If you are successful, we are successful. Um, that pretty much goes for all of the providers. 
And with that, uh, we will open up the floor, I guess, to the questions. Uh, you're more than free to contact us anytime for a direct one-on-one -on -one demo or needs assessment. And we can be reached at ts at connectogive.com. Okay, great. Thank you both Scott and Lars for that great presentation. Um, we are going to go ahead, I will go ahead and leave this screen up for a while so people can be sure to get this contact information um, so you can join them for that one-to-one -one demo. Um, I, so let's take a look at some of the questions. There were several questions that came in that were interested in how a smaller organization or an organization with a smaller budget could take advantage of these services. Um, I am going to go ahead and um, re-put the uh, link to the Connect to Give um, discount donation program into the chat box. But I don't know, Scott or Jim, if you want to go ahead and speak to that each individually. Um, sure. I'll give a quick answer and then I'll, then I'll let Jim respond as well. So. Um, on Connect to Give's end, we have two different plans we can complete. And the suite plan is all of the different tools that we just spoke about other than the donations to the cell phone bill. So the credit card donations, the message websites, and, the com and that's essentially meant for the orgs that don't qualify with the Mobile Giving Foundation, although any nonprofit is welcome to it. The complete plan is giving the 5 or 10 to the cell phone bill, and then you need to apply to the Mobile Giving Foundation. Um, you know, as far as their, their rules and their application, uh, again, they do have a checklist you can look through. We can also help guide you through that. The main points are that you're a 501c3 nonprofit larger than half a million dollars a year in revenue. Um, and, and Jim, you can speak to the BBB part where folks under half a million might be able to take advantage. Yeah, and the purpose of the $500,000 floor, if you will, revenue floor, to qualify for a carrier built product on the text to give side is uh, is really a, a a a measure, if you will, of of uh, resource capability to be able to adequately adequately promote. So the five hundred thousand dollar floor for text to give applies to non BB accredited charities using text donations. Right, it would not apply to charities that are using text for pledge or for credit card billing. Uh, which are the product, additional product lines offered by, by Connect to Give. If you are BPP accredited and if you're below $500,000, we, we will still accept that for text to give. Okay, great. Thank you both. Um, so just taking a look at some of these other questions that have just come in. Um, Rachel was wondering if this suite does or does not include keyword donations. Um, with the yeah. reply link to the mobile site? Yeah. yeah. It absolutely does, and it gives you a reply text with a link to the mobile website to fulfill by credit card. Okay. That makes sense. Um, and Kim had two questions. First, she was wondering what the time frame in general for organizations to receive donated funds would be, and if you, if you know what that information is. And second, she was wondering how Connect to Give compares to Mobile Giving Foundation. Okay. So as far as receiving the donations, with the to give, the donations billed to the cell phone bill, um, the time frame sort of ranges between about 30 to 90 days, we'll say an average of 60. That's uh, a product of the food chain. If someone donates to you, they first have to get their cell phone bill, pay their cell phone bill, cell phone company sends the donation to the Mobile Giving Foundation who acts as the clearinghouse. They send the donation to the nonprofit. Um, with the and mobile website and credit card donations, those are processed by your provider based Connect to Give, um, and that's processed within uh, 30 days of the end of the month. Yeah, let me and just one more comment. This is Jim Manis. Um, on the on processing for text to give, the Mobile Giving Foundation remits those funds within 30 days after receipt from the carriers. The variation is exactly how Scott mentioned it. it's part of the food chain, if you will, in terms of your pledge, your payment of your bill, the carriers collecting of your funds, and then remitting those funds to us. Typically, even though we pay out within 30 days, typically that payment period is is closer to 10 to 14. 
And, and for the second part of the question about uh, us compared to the Mobile Giving Foundation, so the Mobile Giving Foundation um, does the vetting of a nonprofit to make sure that they meet the the rules and regulations you know set in order to do um, the carry or build donations, and then they're the clearinghouse for the funds. Connect to Give comes to play is let, let me just let me just add one let me add one point of clarification before you continue on that, Scott. So not only did we do the vetting of the remittance, we also did the billing piece, right? So the, the, the text donation itself resides on our platform. And we relieved the charity of having to issue the tax receipts. So we also take that burden on as a 501c3 and we issue tax receipts. Sorry, Scott, go ahead. Okay. Um, and Connect Give is the service provider. We provide the nonprofit with the software and the tools that we've just gone through. The widgets and the thermometers and the mobile website and, and so forth and marketing and strategy assistance to help them raise the money. You're raising the money through our software and it's processed by the Mobile Giving Foundation. Okay, great. Thank you both for that the clarification um, and thank you for those great answers. Um, it is the top of the hour so I want to go ahead and wrap us up. If, we did not get to any of your questions. Um, I will be forwarding those unanswered questions to our presenters, but I believe we got through most of them either audibly or in the chat pane. Um, and if you think of other questions or you just want to submit those questions to our website, to our forums, um, you can submit them to the forum that I'll post in the chat pane right now and it's up on the screen. And I do want to take a moment to really thank Jim, Scott, and Lars, both Mobile Giving Foundation and Connect to Give for presenting with us today. Um, this is a lot of great information and a lot of really, really valuable services that hopefully everybody can, can benefit from. So thank you, Jim, Scott, and Lars. Um, and just a little bit more, um, I want to go ahead and thank Shab and Jamila on the back end. I want to thank you all for taking the time to participate in today's webinar. Um, again, we are TechSoup who is working towards a day when every nonprofit, library, and social benefit organization has all the technology that you need so you can fulfill your mission. And we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization just like so many of you. And finally, I do want to go ahead and thank our, our webinar sponsor, ReadyTalk. ReadyTalk is the webinar tool that we have been using today, so big shout out to ReadyTalk. And again, thank you. Um, thank you all for sharing your time with us today. If you would take a few moments after the webinar ends to go ahead and fill the survey out, it does really, really help us in creating um, better webinar services and just better services overall. And we will be recording today's session. We will be sending out a follow-up message after the session to all registrants with the recording with the slide deck, with applicable links, and all of that good information for you all. So thank you all. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Scott. And thank you, Lars. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.